Okay, so today's IC talk is very very interesting. It highlights the importance of reviewing or seeing the peak pressures whenever you are discussing about the ventilatory settings. So, whenever you are reviewing the ventilatory settings on a patient who is on ventilator, other than your tidal volume, respiratory rate, eye ratio, FiO2, PEEP, always 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 give a look at what are the peak pressures which are going on. It gives you a lot of information and give you time to uh, do something to the patient or give you a clue what if something is happening uh, with the patient. So those who are new here, a little bit about the peak pressure. So what are peak pressure? So you know that we put an endotracheal tube or, uh, or tracheostomy tube and connect the patient to ventilator circuit. So this is the airway and this is the lung alveoli. So the lung, so this whole circuit can be divided into three components. One, the external one, your endotracheal tube, which we have put, <coughs> sorry, I'm having little cough and cold, bear with it. So the external circuit is endotracheal tube. Then there is your um, um, lung uh, airways, uh, trachea, bronchus, bronchioles, left and right, and those airways. And when they divide at the bottom, you have a lung parenchyma, which, composed of, which is composed of alveoli. And for that matter, we are taking the pleural space also, in which pleural fusion can occur. So whenever a ventilator ventilates or push the air into this circuit, the uh, pressure exerted can be divided into two components one is the airway pressure we can take the endotracheal tube also in it so the airway pressure this wind pipes and the lung parenchyma pressures so the pressure which is exerted by these tubes or the lung trachea it is called resistance and the pressure which is uh, exerted by the lung parenchyma and your pleural uh, space it is called plateau pressure so understood resistance and plateau pressure so some of these two is known as peak pressure which is the actual pressure which the ventilator has to push against uh, which it has to push the air into the patient so normal your peak pressures means the tracheal pressure uh, is somewhere around 3 to 5 centimeter of water and the plateau pressures are somewhere around 10 to 15 if we sum up these two so the normal peak pressures will be somewhere around 15 to 20 so any rise in the uh, peak pressures means there is some problem in the airway and there is a, some problem uh, in uh, in the alveoli. So how can we differentiate between these two? Uh, there is a separate uh, lecture uh, means we can differentiate it by giving inspiratory pause but we are not discussing. But what I want to tell you that whenever there is an acute change in these peak pressures means your peak pressures are going somewhere around 20, 25, 26 and suddenly they jump to 40 45 like that there means there means there is a sudden change has occurred in the circuit which you needs to look very carefully so what how these peak pressures can be affected suppose the endotracheal tube gets blocked so the pressure will rise or the ventilatory circuit get kinked then it can uh, rise patient is biting the endotracheal tube so that can cause the peak pressures to rise there is a uh, trachea, there is a uh, bronchospasm uh, is there, so it can cause peak pressures to rise. Acute, I am taking uh, telling you by uh, the acute setting, suddenly. If there is a mucal, mucus plug stuck in the bronchus, <coughs> it can cause mm, uh, 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 peak pressures to rise. A hemorrhagic clots get stuck in the endotracheal tube or the uh, airway, it can cause rise. And in the lung parenchyma, what acute changes can occur? Sudden pneumothorax, which can and tension pneumothorax, which can push the parenchyma, and then overall peak pressures rise. But it will cause uh, rise in alveolar pressure, but the total peak pressures will rise. So whenever there is change in the peak pressure, you should give attention to what is happening with the patient. So I am telling you a real case scenario. So I got a call uh, for, uh, for a patient. So this was a young fellow suffering from acute pancreatitis. Already the abdomen was distended. So little bit of peak pressures were rise because the uh, lung parenchyma cannot be expanded completely. So there is abdomen distension. So slightly plateau pressures are rise. So there were uh, peak pressures were somewhere around 20, 25 they were going. And there was a procedure was uh, needs to be done so some amount of fentanyl was given the patient was in spontaneous mode ventilation and when they took the patient on fentanyl and they put the patient on uh, control mode 
and suddenly i got a call that sir uh, that respiration of the patient is not good now there something is uh, wrong with this patient he was breathing comfortably but suddenly something has happened so i discussed with the uh, uh, resident who was on the duty and we discussed and what he sent me what we discussed we took a screenshot so that we can share with you all so let me t- uh, uh, so let me take you to the screen let's see so th- you can see this was the ventilator screen uh, shot which he sent to me you can see that the peak pressures have increased suddenly to 40 the peak pressures have increased suddenly to 40 the first thought which we came in our mind is either it's a tube blockage or uh, uh, or pneumothorax these two things we uh, because uh, tube blockage can happen suddenly and there was central line also it could be pneumothorax so what we did was we disconnected uh, immediately did a suction and the suction was going pretty fine there was mild hemorrhagic secretions but the suction was pretty okay the nursing staff also confirmed there is no tube blockage still we were not uh, sure uh, we want to make sure so what we did is we disconnected this tube from the ventilator and did an embu and uh, and embu was also a little bit fine the staff said that it is going uh, fine and it doesn't seems to have any obstruction per se they have done a section so we thought that okay so it is not tube section then then next we also look at the filter because this is also part of the circuit so it can get clogged because of some secretion also we look at that it was also clear <coughs> so then we auscultated the uh, chest findings <coughs> chest also auscultated their NT was equal, but there was some bronchospasm also there. We nebulized the patient given uh, hydrocortisone also. Still, we want to make double sure. So, we did an x-ray. There was no pneumothorax, but you can see here, there are little bit of uh, shadows. So, this is slightly palmodium sort of picture uh, in, uh, in pancreatitis. So, we give a little bit di- uh, short of diuretics for that. Still, the acute rise and respiration, we were not comfortable. So what the resident told me, sir, though we have ruled out everything, the circuit is okay, tube seems to be pretty fine, there is, I'm was going fine, but in the section there were some uh, hemorrhagic secretions, so maybe there could be some clots which are partially obstructing the tube, it not, may not be complete blockage. So he told me that uh, though it doesn't seem to be like a tube blockage, I want to change the tube. So he went ahead and see this happened when he changed the tube there was blood clots in it which was partially obstructing the tube a sudden clot has from the carina or somewhere else has got stuck into this tube and the tube was blocked and the tube chain and see the peak pressure dropped to 26 so two two learnings whenever you have peak pressure high always try to find out the cause until the cause is not found don't settle and secondly trust your team whether it's a resident junior most person or senior or nursing anyone if they are the bedside they know what is going on their gut feeling we should trust and logically if it is not doing harm to patient we should take that advice so the crux which i wanted to tell you all that whenever you are reviewing the ventilatory settings of a patient always look for the peak pressures what are the peak pressures going on and if they are increasing try to find out the cause and any acute change in the peak pressure should never be overlooked try to find out the cause so i hope uh, this helps you and see you in the next video thank you